Assalamualaikum and hi, welcome back to our science class. So today's lesson, we're just going to continue our topic about blood circulatory and vertebrates, which we'll be focusing on human. So we, before we move on, as usual, we're just going to continue to do a quick recap. So previously, you've learned about the structure and function of a human heart. You've learned that our heart has four chambers, which are right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle so these are the four chambers of the heart you also learn the five blood vessels connecting in and out of a heart which are superior vena cava and inferior vena cava which help collecting the deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body back to the heart and then it will be transported back to the lung in order for the gases exchange to occur through this pulmonary artery okay and then at the lung when the blood receives the oxygen it will be transported back to the heart through this pulmonary vein and then the heart will pump the oxygenated blood to the rest of the body through this main artery we call it iota okay also you learn about the valve the three type of valve on the right side we have tricuspid valve on the left side, we have bicuspid valve. These two valves basically separating the atrium and ventricle in order to ensure the blood flow in one direction. Also, there is this thing we call it semilunar valve on both sides, which helps separate the vessels and ventricle, again to ensure the blood flow in one direction. And last but not least, we have here septum that helps separate the left and the right side of the heart. So, today's lesson, we're just going to continue a bit about the structure and function of main blood vessel. You've learned about the lung chapter 2 and you also learned about the structure of the heart. So, you also need to know the main component that help connecting these two important organs with the rest of the body, which we call it blood vessel, that will help transport the blood to the rest of the body. Alright, so in human, we have three main blood vessels, we call it arteries, capillaries, and veins. So please remember the three types of human blood vessels, artery, capillaries, and vein. Okay, so in the diagram here, it shows how these three blood vessels connected to each other. So the artery here, it will receive the oxygenated blood from the heart. It will help transport the oxygenated, uh, the oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body. And then the capillary here, it helps connect the artery and vein. Okay, at the capillary network here, this is where the gases exchange and other nutrients, the exchange, the gases exchange will occur because it will, the capillary surrounding the, the body cells. Okay. So the capillary will receive the oxygenated blood from the artery and the oxygen will diffuse into the body cells in order for the cellular respiration to occur. Okay, oxygen. And then when the cellular respiration produces carbon dioxide, it will be transported back to the, uh, to the blood uh, through this capillary and this deoxygenated blood will be transported back to the heart through vein. Okay, so let's look onto, uh, into details about uh, the comparison of the structure and function of the, these three main blood vessels. So here, let's start about uh, with the artery first. So artery, as you know, it will receive the oxygenated blood from the heart. So it must have thick and mus muscular wall with a lot of elastic tissues to withstand high blood pressure. So you, if, as you notice here, the wall is a lot thicker compared to the vein and artery. The vein here, it has thinner wall compared to the artery. Why? Because it needs to withstand uh, this thick and muscular wall in order for it to withstand high blood pressure produced at the heart. Okay? So it has no valve because why the pressure created at the heart is high enough so the blood still will flow in one direction there's, there's no need of the valve okay 
and also it has small lumen because lumen is basically the instruct structure of the tubular structure here so the middle part here we call it lumen okay the lumen is smaller compared to the vein but because the wall is a lot thicker so the function the artery will help transport the oxygenated blood from the heart to the whole body except the lung okay because the oxygenated from the lung will be transported by the pulmonary vein the this artery will help transport the oxygenated blood to the whole body except the lung okay so pulmonary artery except for pulmonary artery it transport the deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lung as you've learned during uh, the structure and function of human heart before okay circulation of blood the blood flow rapidly under high blood pressure created uh, by the by the heart okay remember the left ventricle has the thickest wall which it helped produce a high pressure for the blood to be pumped to the rest of the body okay so pulse detected artery does have pulse because due to the um, when the heart pump the blood the surge in the blood flow will produce this uh, the, the, the contraction and dilation of the artery will produce the pulse okay so that's why there's pulse detected at the artery but not in capillary and vein because these two basically carry a lower blood pressure compared to the artery okay so artery will be connected by the capillary okay capillary will help connect it, the artery and vein so capillary has the thinnest wall okay compared to artery and vein capillary has the thinnest wall of them all which is only one cell thick one cell thick means the thickness here is only one cell not like uh, is it does not made up of many layers like here and vein like artery and vein is only one cell thick and without any muscle or elastic tissue okay it also has no valve and has smallest lumen compared to the artery and vein okay this thin wall why do capillary have thinnest wall because look at the function here it allows the exchange of gases food and waste product between the blood and body cells via diffusion through the thin wall of the capillary so in order for the diffusion to occur at higher efficiency the thin wall this thin wall of capillary help the diffusion to occur at higher rate so that uh, the exchange of gases food and waste product can occur easily okay so that's why the capillary has the thinnest wall secretion of blood the, uh, the blood flow uh, slowly under decreasing blood pressure as it uh, the arteries still have higher blood pressure but as it flows through the capillaries the pressure will slowly decreasing okay also it has no pulse no pulse detected so the vein when the carbon dioxide diffuses back to the blood the deoxygenated blood will be carried by the vein so let's look on to the structure the wall is thin less muscular and less elastic wall to facilitate blood flow under low blood pressure so thin wall here because the blood pressure received by the vein is much lower compared to the artery but in order to help this low blood pressure to flow in one direction it, re it requires this structure we call it buff that's why only vein that have buff okay because they receive a much lower blood pressure so it tend the the blood flow tend to go back if there's no valve especially at the leg and our arms due to the gravity okay so that's why the vein need the valve structure for the blood to flow in one direction also it has a lot larger lumen compared to the artery because to again to help um, facilitate the flow of the the low blood pressure so let's look onto the function the veins help transport the deoxygenated blood back to the heart from the whole body except the lung again okay so please remember vein help carries the deoxygenated blood back to the heart 
except for the lungs of course because except for pulmonary vein it helps transport oxygenated blood from the lung to the heart okay as you've learned during the uh, in previous lesson of human uh, heart structure and function of human heart so circulation of blood the blood flows slowly under low blood pressure okay because the the pressure created at the artery uh, it become farther from the heart and the pre the pressure of the blood will slowly decrease when uh, it flows to the rest of the body so the vein eventually receive a low a blood receive blood with a lower with much lower blood pressure so there's no pulse detected at the vein okay so basically these are the comparison of the three main blood vessels so please remember the structure which one is the thinnest which one has thick muscular wall which one carry oxygenated blood which one carry the oxygen the oxygenated blood and so on okay so here there's a micrograph uh, structure showing the uh, artery and vein can you guess can you take a guess which one is the artery and vein so yeah, I assume you got it correct. So here is the artery here. This one is the artery because it has a thick muscular wall, thick muscular wall and has elastic city in it. But here is the vein, okay? As you can see, the wall is much thinner compared to the artery, okay? And also the lumen here, lumen, the artery, uh, the Artery lumen is a lot smaller compared to the vein. Also here, can you take a wild guess which one is the artery, which one is the vein? So yep, I, I assume that you got it correct again. So this one, oh, sorry. So this one here is the artery. So you see the wall is much thicker compared to the vein. Okay. so. Please note that usually uh, the artery, uh, the lumen is basically, in it has this uh, more rigid structure compared to the vein here. So this is the vein, this is the artery. So compared to the vein, the lumen at the vein, usually it collapses compared to the artery. Okay? And please note that the wall of the artery is a lot thicker compared to the vein. Okay, so last but not least, double blood circulatory system. Our blood circulatory system known as double blood circulatory system. Because, why double? Because the heart will receive uh, the blood twice. Okay, one... In one flow, in one complete flow, the heart will receive the blood, the, bl the blood will flow into the heart twice. So one is for oxygenated blood on this side and one for deoxygenated blood. Okay, the, the flow of the deoxygenated blood and then the deoxygenated blood. So the heart receives the blood twice. So that's why we call it double blood circulatory system. Okay, and then also... Our circulatory system has two pathways. One is pulmonary, sorry. One is pulmonary circulatory system. Pulmonary basically connecting the heart and the lung. The circulation of from the heart to the lung, lungs back to the heart. So we call it pulmonary circulatory system. But for the circulation from the heart to all parts of the body, we call it systemic. Okay, systemic is for the circulation of the heart to the rest of the body and back to the heart. But pulmonary is for um, pulmonary is for um, the the lung and the heart. Okay. So basically, just that. All right. Thank you so much. If you have any question, please ask. All right. Assalamualaikum.